Welcome. In this session in linear data analysis, we'll explore the powers of a diagonalizable matrix. Now, powers in the sense of whole numbers are easily defined. So suppose that um, suppose that we have a whole number whole number k. We can say that a to the zero power, we can, if this was a, a number, so if, if this was a real number, we would say that the number to the zero is one. And in the case of a matrix, we can say that the matrix to the zero power, we can define that as i, the identity. And then we could say that a to the k plus one equals, we could do this two ways. I'll say a times a to the k. The other way is a to the k times a. We'll do it this way. Now, let us suppose that a is diagonalizable. So for a diagonalizable, ma diagonalizable matrix, a to the 0, that's the identity. That's not so interesting. A to the 1 is A. That's not so interesting. But it starts to get interesting at A squared. So let's expand A squared. So A squared, by this definition, equals A times A to the 1, which is A. So I can just say A, A. And now let's take this and let's expand A using its diagonalizability. So that would be E times its, so it would be its eigenvector matrix times its eigenvalue matrix times the inverse of its eigenvector matrix. And then the next occurrence of A would be E times lambda times E inverse. Well, I can see that E inverse E has to be the identity. So that has to equal E times lambda times lambda times E inverse. And I can write that as E times lambda squared times E inverse. What happens if I try A cubed? So A cubed that will be a times a squared. And now I'll do the same thing. What I'll do is I'll write down a in terms of its similarity to a diagonal matrix. And that would be e times its eigenvalue matrix times e inverse. And then this term a squared is e times lambda squared times e inverse. And again, I can see that that equals E inverse E is the identity. So the identity times any matrix is that matrix. Doesn't matter whether I factor the identity this way or that way. Either way, I get that to be E times lambda times lambda squared times E inverse. And that has to equal E times lambda cubed times E inverse. And I now have enough material here that I could form a theorem and I could use mathematical induction to show that A to the K in general is E times lambda the, to the K times E inverse. One of the motivating ideas that we carry in this lecture is what's the square root of a matrix. So let's let's recall what it means to have the square root of a real number. So this is first off a has to be real and a has to be a, a non-negative real. So the way that we write that is we say a is in it's a real number and then we put a plus down here to say that it's not negative so that is zero or greater is for a 
equals that, we have a equals some number c squared. So that's what it means for the square root of a is it's a equals c squared. So the square root of a equals c. Well, now let's try extending that to a matrix. So to extend, instead of writing the square root, we'll say a to the 1 half equals a matrix C, where A has to equal C squared. So what does this matrix C look like? Well, let's try Let's try t doing this. Let's try diagonalizable matrices. So let's say for diagonalizable A, this is, so what we have is that A equals its eigenvector basis times its eigenvalue diagonal times the inverse of its eigenvector basis. And we want that to equal C squared. And then if A is diagonalizable, its powers are diagonalizable. And we're going to think that that's going to hold here. So what that means is that it has to equal E times um, some diagonal matrix times an inverse. And now what we need is for these to be equa equated, what that means is that lambda has to equal d times d. So that means that that d has to equal lambda to the 1 half. So we find that d entry i i has to equal the square root of lambda i. So the diagonal, I, the diagonal matrix for c has to be the square root of the eigenvalue eigenvalues of the matrix that we're interested in, which requires that every eigenvalue has to be a non-negative real number. And we could write that as the eigenvalues have to be greater than or equal to zero. So for a matrix A to be, um, for its square root to exist, it has to be diagonalizable, or certainly that's a sufficient condition. And then it's also sufficient if every eigenvalue is non-negative. Now, this is a mathematical way that we can take a matrix that's diagonalizable, and now we can compute it. So we can say that a to the 1 half equals the eigenvector basis times the square root of every eigenvalue times the inverse of the eigenvector basis. And when we do this, uh, this is how we would do it mathematically. Um, computationally, there are much better ways uh, that are known and they are, for example, implemented in MATLAB. So if you want to read further on this, there's lots of numerical analysis material on how to find the square root of a matrix. Let's summarize what we've learned in this lecture. We're now able to confirm whether a matrix is diagonalizable or not. We can use sufficient conditions to determine that a matrix is diagonalizable. That is, it has to have an eigenvector basis. And one way that it can have an eigenvector basis is if the eigenvalues are all distinct. 
And we're able to calculate powers of a diagonalizable matrix. In particular, we're able to calculate the square root of a matrix, which is perhaps a concept that we didn't even have before we went through all of this material.